Hi, my name is Daryl Labar, and in this video, I want to show how to actually unit test a method where some of the calls to CRM you want to actually go through, and some of the calls you want to fake, and you want to intersect that call and actually return back your own results. So in my example here, I've got a request, I got a method that's part of a plugin. It's going in, and it's going to attempt to go find leads that exist in CRM based on a phone number. Um, the actual business use case for this is we have a user in a particular business unit that's wanting to see all the leads in the system to see if maybe there's a this lead already exists. If it's outside of the business unit, they can't actually do anything with it. If it's inside the business unit, they can actually do something with it. But they still need to be able to see it to verify that this is a duplicate lead and they shouldn't enter it in. So how this is being done is this call here and lookup leads is going to do the query with the system organization service requests. So it's going to look up all the leads. This caller here is going to take the results of those initial leads and it's going to go through and do a a request by ID for those particular leads. So basically it's going to say, hey, give me all the leads that are in this thing and run it in the context of the actual user, so the user security is in play here, and return back the leads that the user has access to. And then we can use that user accessible leads, uh, this is actually a hash, to go through and say, hey, does it contain the actual lead that I'm working on? If it does, then it's accessible. If not, it's not accessible. So that's kind of what it is. And there's a third call in here that's actually going to gain this day's parameter to determine if it's past this reset date, if it's if it's too old or too new or whatever it happens to be. So so that's the actual thing we're going to unit test. So the thing we need to actually fake or actually handle is this get user accessible lead ID. The XRM unit test does not do anything rev um, revolving around ID security. Um, not ID security, but business unit security. So if you've got it set up in CRM that this particular role should only be able to see leads in their business unit, the XRM unit test framework doesn't do anything to handle that. So either you've got to do it manually and handle it on your side, or you're going to have to work around it uh, to handle it uh, internally. So here's how um, I suggest handling the situation. I'm going to go to my unit test method here, and I'm going to use a going to use a shortcut, a snippet, for giving myself a, a unit test class to populate with here. So the state being tested here is, uh, what should we call it, leads outside of business unit should not be returned. Okay, And this is for the lead search plugin. Cool. Um, <clears throat> So that gives us our, our basic little call here. Another thing that I'm going to uh, call out right now is that our call here to get the days, it's going to go look up a system setting. And this system setting is data that is going to, need to exist in CRM, and it's going to exist in every single environment we have. And it's not something that I'm going to want to create when I'm running locally. So I'm going to use, our, uh, I'm going to use what's called an, an attribute assumption. And the name of this thing is going to be lead reset max no sales date. So this is just going to go and say, hey, this thing should exist. I've already gone through and ran it through uh, against an actual CRM instance, and it's actually pulled back the XML and everything serialized, so that'll automatically get added to my context when I'm running this actual unit test. So that's the read, lead reset max no sales date. The other things we need to look at is we need to have our leads. So right now, by default, it's giving me a, a generic lead. I'm going to use a little uh, little link pad that I've created, link pad snippet. And basically all I have to do is, and you can, I'm free to give it to anybody that wants it here, but uh, basically all I do if I just run this, it gives me a list of leads to be able to use. I only need two in this case. So I'm gonna call one accessible, and the other inaccessible. Okay, so we're gonna have an inaccessible and an accessible. Rather than typing lead in front of both of them, I'm just going to create another substruct here called leads. Okay. So those are the two leads I'm going to play with. I'm going to need to have a phone number here. So. Let's 
it's just kind of a random little phone number there, kind of unique, just so I don't pull that data from CRM. So that's the phone number. Um, then I need to go through and add those to my values. And D is at leads dot accessible dot entity dot mobile equals my phone number. And accessible dot entity dot mobile phone number. Okay. All right. And so that's initializing my test data. Now we kind of had the fun of going through and doing our actual test. So give me a sec. I'm just going to go ahead and copy in or fill in this this, uh, this in here. Okay, so basically I've filled in the, the basic test here. Uh, I've got my plugin, my REST proxy handler, we call it. I've got a context. It's going to call this lead search method. Um, this, this REST proxy handler is just a way to be able to call a REST call from the uh, CRM JavaScript natively without having to go through uh, SOAP calls. So this can actually go through and execute C-sharp. So in this case, I'm executing this method lead search that's called from this REST proxy. So just kind of a, a background on that. Not that it necessarily is important, but it's exactly, it's just, just describing what we're actually testing here. So that's that um, plugin in my context and my uh, builder here. So really the only thing I'm defining here is that I have this REST proxy context settings that's put, passing in this lead search request with the phone number. And everything else is pretty much um, pretty much boilerplate. And then we're going to go through and do some asserts here. We're going to get out of the context. We're going to get our response object back. And we're going to go through and verify that we have two leads. And the first, that we have one that's accessible, one that's inaccessible. And the accessible one is my accessible one. And the inaccessible one is my inaccessible one. So that's kind of the... Uh, the 10,000 foot view here. So if I go ahead and run this now, I'm going to build it so it actually um, shows up. Okay. If I go ahead and run my unit test now, I've got a breakpoint set where I don't want it. So we failed. I expected the value to be one, but found two. So it found both of our leads, but both of them are being marked as accessible rather than one being accessible and one not being accessible. So how do we go through and do this? We have to fake that call, right? So we're already getting our service passed in in our test method here. Let me start debugging so I can edit this. Okay. So I'm going to update it, and I want to fake it out, so I need to use a... Uh, a builder for that. So the name of the actual object is organization service. So organization service builder OSB. Tab. I need a new, new it up. I'm going to pass in my service as the constructor for that. And now we have all these methods here. We can go through and and fake things out here. So what we're really wanting to do is we want to fake that retrieve multiple. So I should have a fake with retrieve multiple in here. Fake with retrieve multiple. So here's a fake that I'm going to actually go through and describe. It accepts this organization service query base, because that's the actual I interface that we're actually implementing here. And I'm going to change this to this S for that and Q for query. So we have our service and our query. These are the things that are um, going to actually happen here. And now I have to describe what I want this actual function to do. Let's make sure we build that to return back a service. So I need to go through and actually describe what it's going to do. So at the end of the day, I need to return something. I need to return some entity references. I need to return some an entity collection. There we go. So at the end of the day, assuming this isn't the one I'm concerned about, I'm just going to call the normal retrieve multiple on this. And so that just passes through and says, hey, whatever the default is, do the default. I don't care. I'm happy with it. So but now I need to be able to, to talk about how do I figure out I'm actually concerned about this query that's coming in. Because when I go through and run this thing, I'm going to hit this thing multiple times. Okay. So here's one shot. 
Now uh, I've got this QE.GetSQL statement in here. This is an extension method on the query expressions. Uh, I don't currently have QE defined, so I need to do that first. That's the first thing I need to do. Cool. Now that I got it defined, I can refresh this, and I can actually get the SQL statement and see well, what exactly is this thing. So here's my, my lead query. I'm selecting some values from the lead, an outer joining on the process stage, or the modified date is a certain date, and the days here are telephone 1, 2, and 3, and mobile phone. So that's the uh, That's the values I'm returning here. So that's, that's our actual query. That's the one that we're doing that's running as the actual system account. So that's one example. That's the one that I'm not concerned about. Let's continue on. What's this one? Well, this one is the one that's actually I am concerned about. So this is taking the two leads that it got from the previous query, and it's going through and doing this against the user query. So really, the only thing I need to, to look for is that it has this where in statement, and that's it, right? So let's go ahead and, and, and look at that logic there. So if we have a uh, if we have a query expression, and query expression dot has condition uh, in val when with values, um, you can do a has condition if we want to go down that route for something else besides an in, but in this case we actually have a little helper method for that has condition in with values. And so our condition is going to be lead.fields.lead ID, that's our actual field name, and then our values are going to be our IDs.leads.accessible and the inaccessible. Okay. Okay, so if we have those values, and that's and the other one we'll put in here just to just to make sure we don't have anything else that has this a statement in here. Actually we'll leave that as, we'll leave that off and we'll talk about why that's an issue later. So if the query expression condition has has condition in with values lead ID with the values accessible and accessible IDs, then we don't want to do the standard return. We want to do something else different. So we do need to return a entity collection. And then I just need to get an actual ID here that I'm returning. So actually I can just do make this a little simpler. All right, there we go. So I'm going to return a new entity collection that contains just the single one entity value. So this is mocking out the user has access to the accessible one, but not the inaccessible. Okay. So if I go back and set this back to here, and go through and verify that yes, we are actually getting the values, and we are still in that same query expression. Great. And now it's going to return back just the single value rather than the one value, rather than the two values, sorry. Cool. And our test passed. So that's great. So the other issue is we need to talk about is what about when we run against the actual CRM environment? Is there anything in our test that could go wrong? And the one thing about that is that we could have a phone number that exists out in our test environment or another environment that matches that phone number. So another thing you can do it, it, to ensure that you're only dealing with the entities here that you're concerned about is add a filter to that. So I'm going to take this uh, this organization service builder. I'm going to put a filter on it that we're only dealing with the entities that we're actually concerned about. Entities that to array. Oh, that values I need to do. That values. Okay. So this entities collection is going to take all the entities I have listed in here, and it's going to populate those values, and I can just call that rather than having to, uh, to specify them individually. I could go through and do it this way if I wanted to. IDs.leads.accessible and IDs.leads.inaccessible. 
Um, but then if I add another ID value, it's, I'm going to have to add it manually here. So it just saves me the hassle in the future. So okay, so I add it here, and this will go through and I'll add an in constraint, where in constraint, and it will give the IDs to those actual values. So now if I go through and actually run my, my unit test here, now that I run my unit test, I fail, right? Uh, why am I failing? Counts one. So it only found one lead. Why did it only find one lead? Well, let's go look and put a breakpoint here and, and rerun this thing and kind of see what's actually happening here. So I'm going to put the break, set next statement there. And we're going to go ahead and run through that. Okay. So this is the first time this is getting fired. And if I look at my SQL expression, oh, I am in the actual SQL for the main thing to get all the leads back. Because it has my end statement here that's been added by this entity filter here. So what I need to do is add another check here to say, hey, make sure that not only does it have those conditions, that criteria, that conditions, make sure that I only have one of those things. So now if I go back, put my breakpoint in there and run that. Let's start from the beginning. Oh, it's not getting fired at all. I think it's because there's an extra, extra one now. This probably needs to be two. Let's see what we got here. This thing is returning back because it has two conditions. Oh, it's got a sub filter. Okay. Don't want any subfilters. If I look at the filter, it does have a count of one. Great. All right. Now we hit it again, and that's not the one we're interested in. Again. Still in that one right there. Still in the main one. There we go. So here's the one that looks like now, where it's got two of these things, where the lead is in these values and the lead is in those values. So one's been added by the uh, the actual call, the other one's been added by this this entity filter, but it doesn't have any other filters on it. So that's the one we actually need. Hits our actual breakpoint, and now we can fire it off, and the unit test passed successfully. Yep. Okay. Cool. So that's it. That's all we had to do. We use this fake retrieve multiple, and you can add any fake you want. You can fake delete or fake whatever you want, but in this case, we fake the retrieve multiple. We go ahead and get the query expression from that uh, query base, and we go to make sure that it's the query that we're actually interested in, so that it has the conditions lead ID, um, has these two entity IDs in here, and that it doesn't have any other filters on here. And if it does, then we're only going to return back our accessible lead. And that can test the other logic flow where we have an inaccessible and an accessible. And that's all there is to it. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, comment on the video or go to the XRM unit test uh, GitHub account and post a comment on there, either on their Gitter account or as an actual issue if you're having an issue. And I'd be happy to help. Thank you.